Welcome to our simple science experiments that you can do at home and today we are investigating air resistance and making some simple parachutes. So come and join me. Oh, you've caught me putting my washing away and it's got me thinking. If I dropped these socks and this big towel, would they fall at the same speed? Would they hit the ground? at the same time. Well, let's investigate that first. And I've got a bit of a game for you. So we have a popper and we have a coaster. One's thicker than the other, roughly the same size. Will they hit at the same time? Or will one hit the floor before the other? What do you think? Here's our next challenge, two cuddly toys. We've got one rather plump capybara and we have a very small penguin. Will they hit at the same time or will one hit the ground before the other? Here's our next one. We have a small plastic peg and we have a fairly heavy tub of cream for your face. Okay, we have a sketch pad, fairly heavy sketch pad, and we have a thin flannel. What do we think? Here's our last one. So we have a tissue that's screwed up and we have a tissue fresh out of the box. What do you think is going to happen this time? So that was really surprising. Nearly all of the objects fell at exactly the same speed and they fell on the bed at exactly the same time. So all objects seem to fall at the same speed and that's to do with gravity. And if you want to know more about mass and weight and the difference between them, then do check out our video on mass and gravity. But things do seem to fall at exactly the same speed. So it doesn't matter if you've got a big, a towel or a small pair of socks, they do fall at the same speed. But hang on a minute, I hear you say. When we got to the paper towel, it was a bit different because the paper towel that was flat fell far slower than the one that was screwed up. And outside it's a very windy day. And if a leaf falls off of the tree behind me and an acorn falls off, with the tree behind me. They're not going to hit the ground at the same time. So I've got something for you to think about. Why is that? Have you got your answer? Well, the answer is due to air resistance. If we could have a vacuum where there is no air whatsoever, then all objects would fall at exactly the same speed and hit the ground at exactly the same time. So if we dropped a heavy hammer and a really light feather, they would fall at exactly the same speed and they would hit the ground at exactly the same time. Now, the reason that doesn't happen here on Earth is because we have something called air resistance, but do go and check out them doing that exact experiment on the moon, because in a vacuum, the difference is really stark. And it's incredible to think that gravity pulls them down at the same speed and they fall at exactly the same time. So air resistance is really important and part of the answer as to why things often don't fall at exactly the same time here on Earth. So we have gravity pulling us towards the Earth, but air resistance counteracts this and pushes back. Now, we'll always end up back on Earth. We can't stop gravity completely, but maximising air resistance is something that parachutists can do. And you can see from this video that the air is being pushed up in this simulator to stop this person falling to Earth and letting gravity take its course. 
So now let's make our own parachutes and investigate air resistance some more. So to make your parachute, you're going to need some sort of bag, uh, some string, or I've got some cotton here, and then some scissors, or I've got a skewer, because you're going to be making some holes, and then some sort of weight to hang off the bottom of your parachute. I've got a threading bead, but you could use some plasticine, um, or you could use um, a building block person, uh, anything that's got a tiny bit of weight to it, which will help your parachute fly. So let's get making. So the first thing you need to do with your bag is you need to find the end, because this bit is going to be what is going to make your parachute. And you're going to put four holes into your parachute at the opening end. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your bag where your holes are and you're going to get your thread and you're going to put the thread through the holes. It's a little bit fiddly, but you get there in the end. And then once it's through the hole, you're going to tie a knot. So you have your bag and four strings. Then you're gonna grab all four bits of your string and you're going to tie them to whatever weight it is you're going to use. A little bit fiddly, but we got there in the end. And there's your simple parachute ready to go and test. Well, I'm going to go and experiment with my parachutes to create the most successful parachute that a parachutist has ever used. And I'm going to experiment with lots of different variables. So first of all, try and change the different type of actual parachute you use. How does that affect the speed that it drops to earth? Maybe then change the length of the string. How does that affect the drop of the parachute? And maybe the weight, change the weight and see how that affects the parachute. Don't forget you're only changing one variable at a time so make sure you're dropping them from exactly the same height. Get your stopwatch out and work out what is the best parachute and have fun experimenting with this simple science experiment all about air resistance. If you make some fantastic parachutes don't forget to share them over in our Twinkle Home Ed Facebook group and I'll see you soon for more simple science experiments. Thank you.